Welcome back to Rose Horsemanship Center, my office, and uh, we're going to be talking about building speeds within a gait or an extended trot and a slow trot. Um, for this horse, uh, she's a three-year-old, and one of the things we're doing is we're preparing her for competition um, in ranch riding classes where she's going to be asked to stretch out to a nice long trot and then come right back with the rider to a nice slow jog. And uh, this exercise has a lot of value to it. Um, it's something that I like to use as a warm-up, so I, I do this just about every day on every horse I ride. It's a great way to warm up their body and their mind. It's building connection to the rider because I'm going to first ask her by standing up in my stirrups or doing a rising trot for the extended. I'm going to settle back into the saddle and use my seat and my core for a slower trot. So it gets them in it. So if they're doing that without needing to pick up the reins, it shows you that they're connected with you. I'm going to show you how I set this up. I'm going to have a deliberate cue. And my cue for her is going to be, I'm going to stand up in the stirrups and hold the horn. And I'm doing this specifically because it's one of the cues that judges um, like to see in a ranch riding class. Um, I used to just do a rising trot and then I would just sit. Uh, but I didn't feel like there was a big enough difference to the horse. I'm also going to put my hand forward again. That's part of the, the cue that we're kind of going for for the competition she's going to be doing. Um, and I'm also going to cluck. And I want her to be clear that that means trot faster, not canter. So if she breaks gait and, and goes into a canter, which I, I want to bring out in them a little bit, if she does that, I'm just going to bend her down, make that uncomfortable, and then ask her off again. But again, if you don't show them where those boundaries are, if you don't accidentally canter sometimes, if you don't accidentally break to a walk sometimes, you're not stretching them far enough. So some of you may be watching this video and you might think, um, ah, it's a little bit of a boring thing or, you know, because there's nothing real flashy or super exciting about this exercise. But I'm telling you, it's one of the core exercises that we do on a regular basis. And so I would really encourage you to do this exercise with your horse. It's good for all horses, regardless of discipline. And uh, let me show you what this will look like. I've given her plenty of room and uh, I'm just going to ask her into a trot. And I just want to get a baseline and just what's, what's kind of her trot like. And uh, this, is, this is pretty perfect for me because you can see her head's up little bit bracy and it's a little bit hard to ride it's a little bit fast a little bit choppy i i'm sure she could trot faster i'm also sure she could trot slower so this is a good example of what i mean by she's just kind of got this middle of the road pace nothing wrong with it but i want to get clear with her that she can go faster and she can go slower and i kind of want to get rid of this middle trot so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to ask her to trot out faster stand up here Broke through a canner. So I'm going to get a hold of her here and bend her down. And I'm just going to make this uncomfortable. So there's more pressure on her now that she broke through a canner. Then there, now there she got soft, so now I'm ready to go off again. Then there was when I was asking her to trot. Okay. Go right back into that fast trot. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to cluck. You don't have to stand up if you just want to rise or try to sit it. You can do however you want, it doesn't matter. I'm just letting you know the cues that I use. Ooh, I like that. We're cooking. Oh, so there she thought about breaking gait. Now I want to make a point here. A lot of people are going to be inclined if the horse attempts to make a mistake and start to correct him and fix it right there. Don't do that. I like to call it signing him up, meaning let that horse fully commit to whatever mistake they're going to make. That way, when you correct them, they're gonna be more sure what was the wrong thing, and therefore understanding better what's the right thing to do. So right there, I felt her making a mistake and I wanted to correct it because that's human nature to micromanage them. But I have to slow down, sign her up, let her commit to breaking into a canter, let her get a couple of canter strides off and then bend her down, okay? Let's try it again. Stand up. And I'm also timing, I'm also timing my uh, clucking um, with my legs, okay? So I'm not putting my legs on right away, I'm clucking first. And if I don't feel a noticeable speed increase, then I go to my legs, okay? So let's trot, stand up, that's the cue. Now there, I'm gonna bend her down because she got a little bit too added to eat. This horse is fresh. We just saddled her up and um, warmed her up a little bit on the ground, but I basically just got on and started filming. So, and she's a green three-year-old. No big deal.
There we go. So there, her ears went forward. She stretched out at that gate a little bit more. I like the way that felt. And then I settled back and noticed she came back to a little bit slower trot than we had in the beginning here. So she's relaxing more after speeding her up. Now there she broke to a walk, so that means I got a little too slow. It means we need to go ahead and speed up again. So when you settle back in and you ask them to do a slower trot, if they break to a walk, let them break to a walk, but then squeeze them right back into a fast trot. And that readiness to thinking about going into a faster trot will keep them from breaking gait. But by not letting them break gait, micromanaging them, you're not gonna you're not gonna give them any responsibility. And if you've been watching any of my videos, you know I'm all about giving horse more responsibility. There we go. That's good. Now there I feel her bracing up a little bit, not really speeding. Again, let her commit to that mistake. Bend her down. Now when I bend her down, a lot of people are thinking about doing like a hind quarter yield or a circle. It, I want you to do kind of an in-between the two. The point is to put a little bit of pressure on them to make breaking gait more uncomfortable than staying in the gait. Not to just disengage, but walking a circle is a little too easy. I probably corrected her there a little bit early. I kind of broke my own rule. I should probably let her commit to that a little bit more. There we go. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Ooh. And she came back to me nice. Very good. Let's go ahead and try. Very good. Settle back. Now you see when I settle back, I don't just pick up those reins right away. Let her find and feel that difference. Look at that nice slow jog. Look at that headset. Ooh. Very good. So I hope you guys can see the improvement that she made. This is just something that you don't come out and spend hours practicing it. You pepper it in each ride, um, get it consistent, but the more you test them, the more you stretch them out, really speed up that trot, really slow that trot down, the clearer they're gonna get to understanding maintain trot, don't break gait, and the better those gaits are gonna get. It's good for their mind, good for their body, good for their emotions, puts the whole package together. So hope you guys enjoyed this training video. If you did, make sure you hit the subscribe button and uh, Go and give it a try. Thanks for watching.